I had a 45 year old who actually died of this and with two young children at the age of two and seven and that was the thing that really got me very angry indeed. Silicosis is produced only from one cause and that is inhaling silica dust. It used to be very common in the last century and nowadays there shouldn't be any cases of silicosis at all because it is completely preventable. Silicosis, once it's established, is impossible to reverse. The only treatment is a lung transplant and in fact a lot of people are unsuitable for lung transplantation anyway. So it's really important that this is prevented at source. And it's really quite easy to prevent at source because if you cut down the amount of respirable free silica, which is present in the air when you're working with a variety of different products, then you just won't get the disease at all. Silicosis used not to be common at all. In fact, when I first came over here 25 odd years ago, there were hardly any cases. I used to see the very occasional one, but that was only from exposures that had happened many years ago when the levels were much higher. But over the last 10 years or so, we've seen a huge number of cases of silicosis, which have pretty much all been linked to exposures to artificial stone, which is this new type of stone, which is used, for example, for kitchen and bathroom bench tops. So we shouldn't be having any cases at all because the regulations exist. And we've actually recently had the regulations revised so that the levels are lower. But because of poor work health and safety, and because of the legacy of this new type of product, which is the engineered stone, we're seeing more and more cases in more and more young people. So with the patients, what we're seeing is a large number of non-English speaking patients who come into Australia who don't understand anything about the sort of hazards because they don't speak very good English. And they sometimes are working in family firms, small firms, and they have no concept of the danger of this and so they've used no sort of precautions whatsoever and as a result they've had very high levels of silica exposure. I mean when I say very high I mean a thousand times above the exposure limits and what that does is it means that the what we call the latency period which is the different the time between exposure to disease developing has been very much shortened. So these people are getting disease within you know five to six years Compared with asbestos, the asbestos latency period is in the region of about 20 to 50 years. So we're seeing disease a lot earlier. So if you have silicosis, you often won't notice anything at all. And the vast majority of people first notice breathlessness on exertion, often when they're doing, you know, going upstairs or sometimes climbing ladders at work. And a lot of people just dismiss that. They say, well, I'm getting a bit older. You know, I've been in the game for a while. And then eventually when you're getting really bad, then you'll develop a cough. Sometimes you'll cough up some sputum, um, but that's pretty much it until you get so breathless that you can hardly do anything. And so the, the insidious nature of silicosis is that you can actually have really quite bad disease without having much in the way of symptoms at all, which is why it's important that people should actually go to their doctors and they should actually get screened early on.